Sister Ministry. So glad to be here with you on another Sunday afternoon. We're excited about being here with you at this time. It is the Lord that has gathered us this day to join together in unity, amen, to come together on this Palm Sunday to honor and to worship and to gather and to give glory to our Lord, amen. Even now, let's go into a word of prayer. We're going to find ourselves, amen, getting into the word of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you now, Lord. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your grace, for your grace is sufficient. Oh, God, we give glory to your name. We give honor to your name and we exalt your holy name, asking, oh, God, that you would be magnified and glorified and exalted in all that we do this day, Father. Oh, God, we lift you up on high, for there is none like you, Lord. God, we recognize you as king, Lord. God, the, the, the representation of this day is, is that you were set aside, you were set apart from the very birth of your life, Father God, until the very day that you that you would allow Jesus to come into the land of Jerusalem, Father God, that he might actually be crowned, oh God, to be called king, oh God. And we say thank you now that you would help us, oh God, to come into our rightful stance, into our rightful understanding, into our rightful knowledge of you, that you might bless us, oh God, in all that you do, oh God, and cause us, Lord God, to bless your holy name. We exalt you on high, Father, and we lift you up on high, Father. We ask that you would be blessed, O oh God, in what we do at this time, and be exalted, O oh God, in our efforts. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Well, welcome to this, this uh, Palm Sunday service. Uh, even now, we're, we're coming into this time of the year where we're coming into resurrection or what we call Holy Week. Amen. It's a time where literally we begin to uh, begin to think about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We begin to think about what Jesus did for us, amen? And we believe uh, it, it, what he did uh, on this week, amen, they, they actually um, crystallized the day, amen? They caused the day to be set as a landmark that we would always remember, that we would never forget what Jesus had did on that Friday, amen? And so we thank God for this and what he, and what has taken place and we recognize what took place on that Sunday the resurrection amen and he got up amen and oftentimes we we this time of year we we don't go back to baby Jesus we don't think about baby Jesus that much because that we save that for Christmas time but baby Jesus is re relevant here as well amen and, and so what we begin to see on this day is is that uh, Jesus he finds himself um, he's been with his disciples. So the picture is that he's been with the disciples for a number of years now. And he's been talking to them about what would happen, what is to come, what is to take place, what is going on, and, and, and really trying to explain to them about what's about to happen right now. And they really don't want to hear it. <laughs> that this is the season where literally that he would have to be taken. But nobody would take his life. He would actually offer himself freely. And so now uh, they, they find themselves at a place. And in Matthew, I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 21, starting at verse 1. And I'm going to read through verse 4. Matthew 21 through verse 4. And it says, And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethpage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway shall find an ass, tie and coat, and a coat with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say unto you, you shall say, The Lord hath need of them. And straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye, the daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt with the fowl of an ass. And so what we begin to see 
is that Jesus, he was coming near to Jerusalem. He had came to a place of Bethpage. And at the Mount of Olives, uh, the Mount of Olives was uh, the mountain that was facing Jerusalem. Uh, this would also be the same mountain where King David fled to uh, this mountain for refuge from his son when his son was chasing him. Uh, this would have been a usual place that Jesus visited. This would not have been a strange mountain. This not, would not have been a strange place. This would have been a place that Jesus oftentimes visited. And every time he visited Mary and Martha, he was on this mountain. This was the same mountain where Jesus told his disciples about the future. When we get to uh, Matthew chapter 24 and through 25, he later tells his disciples about the future, what's going to take place and what's about to happen. Uh, and in the end times, this is the same mountain in which Jesus was upon. But this is the same mountain where after being betrayed, Jesus was found in the Garden of Gethsemane. Very important mountain. And so now Jesus, he's approaching this mountain. He's coming. And, 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 and I'm going to jump over to John chapter 12. Start at verse 12 through 19. Yeah. And what we begin to see in John chapter 12, verse 12, starting at 19. Uh, at this time, we see... And it says, on the next day, much people that were come to the, to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, this is what they did. They took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon, and as it was written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's colt. This was prophesied years, many years before, by the prophet Zacharias. Zechariah 9.9. 9. He had prophesied that Jesus, that, 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 that Jesus will come and the way that he would come, his majesty would come, the way that his greatness would show up, when he would be riding on a humble donkey, meek. Amen. Oftentimes, so, so what, you, what, you, what you fail to realize and what you fail to understand is that the people of the day, they were looking for a revolutionary Messiah. They were looking for someone to overthrow their troubles. They were looking for someone to turn the pages of what they had been going through. They had been found themselves on the bottom and they was trying to make it to the top. And they were longing for the Messiah to come and the Messiah that will come. They were longing for him to come and to set things aright. They were longing for a Messiah that would come uh, to, to actually uh, put them in charge. At this time, they were living as a second-class people, right? Uh, they were living amongst the Romans. And the Romans, they ruled everything. And if you were lucky, you might get Roman citizenship. And so they're waiting on a Messiah to come. To save their people, to deliver their people, to bring their people to a place where they might find themselves uh, with a new king. Yes. God gave them Saul at one point in time. And now they were hoping for a new king. Yes. But Jesus, he, even at his birth, he didn't appear, he didn't show up the way that it seems that royalty would come on the scene. There, there was something about a humble servant, a, a, a humble servant that would actually come and the way that he would come, he would come in such a manner. And so in John chapter 12, uh, what we begin to see is that the, there was a festival going on and it began to draw a crowd near. We can also find this in Luke chapter 19, verses 29 through 30. 
And when Jesus came down where the road goes uh, down to the Mount of Olives, the crowd of the disciples began to praise God joyfully. The people heard Jesus was on his way. Amen. Oh, they had heard of the miracles that he had done. They had heard of the things that he had, had taken place throughout his ministry, the things that had gone on, that, that literally that he, he had fed the, the, the multitudes multiple times. That if you were hungry, you could get with Jesus and he would find you some food. Uh, they heard about the many times that he had shown up and gone to different places and, and he had laid hands and he had healed the sick. And, and if you were sick, this was the best health care plan that could be found. The crowd, they came and many came with, with great joy uh, uh, to praise God and others might have come as spectators to find and see what was taking place. But all in all, they heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. So in honor of this, what the people began to do was they began to take branches. They took branches because they wanted to meet him. They wanted to see him if they could touch him. And the people began to shout, Hosanna! 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 Now, in the native tongue, what Hosanna means, it means save us now. Save us now, save us now, save us now. They begin to cry, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. Yes. This was a perfect reenactment of what took place in 2 Kings chapter 9. When the people took the coals and spread them out. Jesus had sent his disciples, he says, go get a coat. A, 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 a donkey a, a, that has not been written. And they found one on the east side of the mountain. But all of this was done to fulfill the prophecy, fulfill the promise that God had made earlier on. And what was that prophecy? What was that promise that God had made earlier on? That prophecy and that promise that God had made earlier on is that he was going to send a deliverer. He was going to send a Messiah. He was going to send a king. And this is the way that the king would come. Pastor, we get it. Well, anytime I do a good job and sharing what I'm sharing is when I actually am able to make a bridge between then and now. Amen. What is the connection between then and now? They threw palms on the ground. Praise the Lord. He rode on a fresh donkey. Hallelujah. How does that equate now? Amen. Well, the people, they were smart enough to realize that that God, when he makes a promise, he doesn't change his mind. Amen. That God does not forget. I don't know how many of you or what God has said to you, but I want to encourage somebody today that every promise that God has made to you about you, he's going to fulfill. Amen. Amen. And I don't care when you got it. I don't care how long it's been. I don't care uh, 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 who said it. Because you know what? Sometimes we judge the person. I don't like him no more. <laughs> I don't like her. <laughs> so therefore, it must not be true. Well, I don't care who said it. When God makes a promise, he keeps it. Amen. 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 Zechariah said that, that, that this is how he's going to show up. And guess what the people did? They reacted. Yes. They responded. Yes. They responded with action. Yes. By grabbing palms and 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 and, and, and his disciples, they went and got the donkey, and, and Jesus knew exactly what was needed in order for it to be seen, and, and God was acting out. Many times in our lives, God is actually reenacting something that he's already promised us. Or oh, when we begin to look at the marriage ceremony, every time I look at my wife and I feel that this is not a good day, I'm to look back on the reenactment 
of the wedding day. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm to think about the trumpets that blew. I'm, I'm to think about, I, I, I watched myself the other day, I was watching an old video about Easter, and I, I sat up and I said that when I stood there watching her come down the aisle before she took her first steps, I was clapping. And I don't know whether I was clapping physically or I was clapping in my heart, but I know I was applauding what I was looking at. I was glad, amen, to be standing on the receiving end. God was reenacting what he had promised, what he would do. God is not like a man that he would say one thing and change his mind and do another. Amen. We have to remember that he is the Lord thy God and he changes not. Even now on this Palm Sunday. Amen. What makes Palm Sunday so special? Because God ain't forgot. Amen. He has not forgotten about you. He's not forgotten about your positioning. He has not forgotten where you are. He has not forgotten. If God said you're great, you're great. If God said you're good, you're good. If God has made a promise and says, I won't lose out on this. I'm not going to let this go away. He meant what he said. Though, you may, though what you may be looking at at this present time may not look like what he said. But it is our reaction. It is our reaction in faith. Amen. They were waiting for a revolutionary hero. They were looking for somebody to overthrow the Roman Empire. And that's not what Jesus came to do. See, sometimes while we're waiting, in our minds we get new ideas after we've waited for a while. Our imagination begins to tell us what it's supposed to look like and how it's supposed to be. But what God said, he meant. And what he said he would do, he's going to do. Amen. And you got to remember that. Yes. That Jesus is not a liar. That's fine. That the Lord, he is true. Yes. The Holy Spirit we have is the spirit of truth. Amen. Glory, glory. Yes. And God glory. will do. Just said he would. Just what he said he would do. We see Jesus. He's coming into this place. Uh, everybody knew what was going on. Oh yeah, the, those that were against Jesus, they went mad. They, they was like, "You see what's happening? Everybody's going after him. Everybody's following him now." Because at one point in time, they wanted to handle this affair before, behind closed doors. They wanted to deal with it early on. And they were giving counsel that if this be of God, leave it alone. But if it be a man, it's going to go away. And now it looked as if everybody was following Jesus. Everybody was praising the Lord. Everybody was yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna. Save us. Save us. Do you know that not long from this time, a few days later, that they would actually be crying out for the same Jesus? But it wouldn't be save us. <laughs> They'd be saying, get him. <laughs> get Jesus. Crucify him. Crucify him. You know, I, I want to I wanna tell you, and I beg to differ, that good guys don't finish last. See, because the one thing about Jesus was, is though he went to the cross, and though he died, and though he was innocent, he got back up. Yes, he did. With all power in his hands. Glory, glory, glory. I think, I think sometimes... This Christian walk, I've, I've been asked a couple of times, they say, you're a Christian, right? I say, yeah, I'm a Christian. And they say, well, how many times do you pray? And I said, well, it all depends. I was told that sometimes people say that they have to pray because it's mandatory for them to pray many times a day. And I understand that. Uh, but my rebuttal and my answer was is that I don't 
have to pray every day. It is my lifestyle. It is how I live. It is not a mandate that is made or put upon me to do. It is actually who I am. It is what I do. It is who I am. It is my lifestyle. And so sometimes in a day I might pray one time. I think that's rare. Because I find myself praying all day long sometimes. And other times I find myself praying at different times. Uh, see, what happens is that sometimes we can get confused with trying to make accepting Christ and living as a Christian more complicated than what it is. The reality of it is, is, is that Jesus Christ came and did it all. He came, he died on the cross. He did all the work. That which was rightfully my job to do. That which was rightfully my portion to receive. That's true, sir. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. That was my portion. He came and he worked it out by dying and doing what no one else could and raising again that I might have life eternal. So now my job, what is my job? To live. Amen. What is my job? To live. To live a life. What kind of life? Pleasing to him. Amen. To live a life that is that is set aside, that is set apart, that is consecrated, that is to bring honor to God, Amen. to give glory to God. Amen. Then now I no longer just say Hosanna with my mouth, with my heart, daily. I give myself, not by, not, not because I'm afraid to go to hell. Wait a minute. I don't want to go to hell. But not because I'm afraid to go to hell. I do it because I love him. And I love him because he first loved me. His love. I didn't even know he loved me the way that he loved me. I didn't even know he cared the way that he cared. Until I got the can't help us. Right? All the stuff that I started tapping into that had nothing to do with what his word said do. And he didn't change his mind about Glory. He didn't forget about me. What did he do? He continued to show me that he loved me. Even when I didn't believe it. Because see, sometimes life can hit you with stuff and you say, it's over. <laughs> Throw in the towel, I'm done, I quit, it's over. <laughs> no more. I, I quit. But he didn't quit on me. Amen. And, and, and that's something that literally nobody can preach to me. That's a sermon that no, I don't need anybody to preach to me. That's something I don't need nobody to tell me. That he loved me. Amen. When I didn't know whether I wanted his love. That I can believe his promises towards me. I can believe who he says I am. Now, now, now I got to tell you that, that the reality of it is, is that if he's calling you and you say, well, if you've heard it, you heard it spoken over your life, you got a God calling on your life and, and God wants to use you and God wants to do this in your life. And you say, I'm running from him. I'm running. I'm running. I'm trying to get as far away from him as I can, as I can get away. Oh, then literally that's not right. That ain't the same. You got to run to him. You see what happened to Jonah? Mm -hmm. yep. He was running. The, the Bible says that he was running. It, well, no, it says he booked a, 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 a fair mm -hmm. to Tarsus. 
And he was trying to get out of the presence of God. What kind of nonsense is that? <laughs> trying to get out of the presence of God. Get away from everybody that knew him. Get away from everything that looked familiar. Let me just go somewhere and get away. And he found himself traveling on the boat. And when the situation arose, I'm, I'm going to tell you that when you, 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 can, you can understand that his thinking was not clear because when he was on the boat and he was trying to get away from the presence of God, everything started going bad. And, they, and all the people on the boat said, do you have a God? Pray to them. You got a God? Pray to them. You got a God? Pray to them. And then he said, it's me. It's my God. <laughs> that's, doing, that's doing all of this. <laughs> the reason we in trouble that we in is because of my God. So this is what you do. This, this is the solution. Throw me overboard. <laughs> He's still trying to get away. He's still trying to get away. The people, the people on, on the boat had more compassion on Jonah than Jonah had on himself. They was like, no, we don't want to throw you over the board. Let's, let's, let's roll some dice. Let's, let's cast some lots. Let's, let's see who, who picked the biggest straw. We, let's figure out what we can do to keep you on board. Mm -hmm. And yet, he went overboard. Isn't it like God that Jonah would find himself overboard <laughs> feeling that uh, it's over now. If the water don't get me, the, the man eating sharks gonna get me. Something gonna get me. And he gets swallowed up by a caring fish. <laughs> <laughs> they would not digest him. <laughs> And he's, he's in the fish and he's, he's there and he realizes that I am not dead. I'm not gone. And in this time of being in the belly of this fish, he comes to his senses. Yes. How do we know that he comes to his senses? The Bible says that he prayed. He prayed. He was running from the presence of God and now he's running into the presence of God when he prays. Amen. The Bible says that the fish at the, at the same time was moving according to God's plan. Oh, the fish was moving in the right direction towards Nineveh. The fish vomited him up and it was definitely a miracle. He come out Walking with seaweed, smelling like sushi, <laughs> and preaching the gospel. <laughs> See, Jesus is the king. Yes. God promised that he would come. And what God said that he wants to do in your life, he wants to do it. He wants to accomplish it. I think some of us are waiting for God to take us like Jonah. You know that's not God's desire. He wants us to receive him. We're waiting for God to handcuff us and to, 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 to put us in a position that we can't get out of and, and then we got to pray our way out and, and then after we pray our way out we promise God I'm going to never do it again and I'm going to do it like this and I'm going to do it like that and, and then when we forget about what he's done, then we go back to our old ways. You can't trick God. You cannot trick him. And why wait until you get broke down, busted, and disgusted to actually say, now nah, I'm going to serve you, Lord. I'm going to serve you, Jesus. I got you. Man, get in there. Let him use you with all your strength, with all your might. 
Because what he promised, he will do. So, so if, if, if that be true, if, if, if that he promised that, 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 that the Messiah would come, and he, he promised that he would come riding in on a coat and, and that it had never been written in the town and people would see him and they would cry out, oh, Hosanna. Uh, and then, then literally, and he, he, he's promised that there's things that he said he'll do in your life. And you can believe those things to take place. Don't you believe he's coming back? He's coming back. He promised. I don't care how long it's been. They've been saying that for years. They've been saying that Jesus is coming back soon. When is soon? Jesus is coming back soon. Oh, Jesus is coming back. Yes, he is coming back soon. And we want to be ready. We want to be ready. We want to. We want to be uh, in the right place. We want to be doing what we're supposed to be doing. We want to allow the Lord to do what He said that He desired to do in our lives. Jesus is coming back soon. He's coming back soon. I, I watched the basketball player. He sat up there. He says, well, I just want to say that Jesus is coming back soon. And he just began to go in. He went all the way in. I said, who? Okay. They got the basketball. He was supposed to be talking about his shots, what he, was supposed to, what he did, what happened. He, he just started preaching the gospel. Amen. To all the uh, to, to uh, interviewers. He's coming back soon. And this ain't no doomsday report. This means that now we must get on our, we must be about our father's business. Yes, yes, Lord, 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 Lord. We must be about our father's business, doing what it is that he called us to do. Lord, if God has called you to do something, if he said that this is what I want for you, and this is how you should be doing, and this is how you should be responding, now is the time. Begin to train, begin to prepare, begin to get ready. Don't be afraid. Amen. Don't be afraid. Okay, how many boogie monsters come against you? That's what happens. The boogie monsters start coming against you. You say, I want to serve Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. Right? Yes. We got to stand up. We got to stand right. When the Lord, when he calls us, when the Lord, when he actually uh, uh, comes into our hearts, yes. he gives us the power yes. 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 to live right. Thank you. Amen. And I don't care. I've seen it multiple times. I've seen it over and over again. I've seen it over and over again. I've seen it over and over again. I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, I've seen it over and over again. I've seen people that actually come into the Lord and they're saying one thing with their mouths and they're saying everything that the Lord is saying, but their actions are wrong. They're saying everything that the Lord is saying, but their actions are not right. I see them saying everything that the Lord is saying and then somehow they seem like they're doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing and they keep talking the right stuff and before you know it, that wrong stuff be gone out of their life and we don't know where it went we don't know when it left but they kept telling the truth they kept speaking the truth they kept doing what God wanted them to do they kept being what God wanted them to be and that old stuff that old man that old thing kept falling off over and over again because all we got to do we got to actually be faithful yes glory to God glory to God sometimes we say I got to get everything together first I got to put it all together I got to make this happen do this Got to cut this off. Got to shut this. No, no, no. Accept Jesus. Receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life and begin to walk it out. Amen. This is my journey. I'm walking it out. Amen. Pastor, I got a little bit of something. Walk it out. Matter of fact, I'm going to walk with you. Come on. Because I didn't been somewhere. Amen. We can walk it out together. Amen. 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 It's the Lord that cleans us up. Yes, Lord. That's true, sir. It's the Lord that washes us. It's the Lord that makes us right. Yes. If He could promise that He's coming, He can heal us while we live. He can change us while we're here. He can use 
us. I found out that God don't discriminate. <laughs> oh, he take them from eight to eighty. <laughs> but they say blind, dumb, crippled, or crazy. <laughs> He used them all. For his glory. Glory. Let us make Jesus king. Yes. King of our lives. That means that we commit our loyalty. We commit our life. Even unto death. Soldiers. When they go to the war, they don't know what day is when. But they know they're fighting for a cause. We commit our lives. We commit our lives to Christ. Make him king. Crown him. Lord of your life. Crown him. Lord of your life. Yes. Yeah. Crown him. Yes. Yes. We want to do what we say. Amen. Yes. Crown him. Amen. Yes. Lord of your, of your life. Amen. Amen. I believe that at this time that those under the sound of my voice that have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Will you pray this prayer with me? I believe when you pray this prayer, the Lord will become king. Yes. The Lord will meet you where you are. And the Lord is able to handle your needs. Let's pray. Please repeat after me. Lord Jesus, please forgive me of all my sins. Lord, I believe that you died and rose again. Lord, save me. I receive my salvation now. now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Let me pray another prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you now, Lord God. You know those in whom you have touched their hearts. God, I ask even at this time, Lord, equip them, provide for them, give them what they need. Strengthen them, oh God. Yes. Cause them to know you in a way as never before. Yes. Change them, oh God. Yes. Make them more like you, Father. God, I pray, Lord God, that you would empower them with the power and the might and the grace to never go back. To never go back to where they've come from. Empower them, oh God, with wisdom and boldness to speak the truth in season and out of season. But their compassion will be great. I thank you, Lord. You promise never to leave them nor to save them. And we believe you. God, give them peace, oh God. Give them rest, oh God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you for joining us. I want to uh, just encourage you to get into your Bible, read your word. I want to encourage you to find yourself actually getting with someone and allowing them to encourage you in the things of faith. I want to say God bless you and keep it me. Continue to cause this face to shine upon you. Till next time. God bless. Okay.